This is not good. All right, what you are watching on your screen right now is a PG version of what would happen to our power grid in the event of a strong solar storm or a geomagnetic storm. This has been a very hot topic lately as the sun is entering what we call solar maximum. And in a nutshell, that means the sun is putting off the most energy when it comes to solar flares, CMEs, or coronal mass ejections, which usually take place on a 15 year cycle, which as you can see, we are just at the beginning phases of. Now, what's especially interesting thing about this situation is that you don't have to go far to find information not only on if this is going to happen but when. This particular article coming out just yesterday on how scientists believe that a solar storm is in fact going to have drastic effects on our power grid. And I gotta say we do have some very real and very dark history that supports this theory in something we call the Carrington event. This may in fact be the biggest solar storm and effect on earth that we've ever seen and according to scientists both in the private sector and and on a government level, if this event were to take place today, the effects on the earth and our current dependence on power alone could be over a thousand times worse than it was when this event took place in 1859. We are certainly going to go over that event and the potential outcome if this event were to take place in today's world. I've also got a pretty cool short clip for you right after this to show you what our world might start looking like if one of these events did take place. My friends, we're going to break this all down right here, right now. Let's go. <laughs> Check this place out. I just hopped the fence. I probably shouldn't have, but way too cool to pass up. It's like this little just parking lot fenced off. Just looks like a movie scene. Too cool. All right, my friends, welcome back. April 6, 2022. And yes, that was just a clip I filmed the day before yesterday in this weird looking alley I found. And I felt like it fit right in with the aftermath of what we may very well be experiencing sooner than later on this planet when it comes to the incredible power of our sun. Now, as we've already started to discuss, we are entering a 15 year cycle of solar maximum. That is a cycle of time where the sun is at its strongest potential to cause what we've been dealing with a lot in the last few days and last few weeks as far as solar storms. That involves solar flares, coronal holes, coronal mass ejections or CMEs, sun filaments, anything that explodes off the sun that then in turn heads towards earth basically in the form of solar wind which then impacts our magnetic field and if strong enough and it's happened before in the past and an event that we're going to be talking about in just a minute but this extreme force on the earth's atmosphere and magnetic field has been known to affect our power grid, cell phones, internet usage and as time goes on especially now in 2022 where most of our world is heavily invested in electricity it is more than fair to say that we are at our most vulnerable time in human history now to be clear this is not just my theory here based on the fact that the sun's been going absolutely crazy over the past few weeks but in fact we are now seeing mainstream articles that are really not holding back at all in fact take a look at this article right here it does not get more in your face than it does with a title like this scientists think solar storms will knock out internet and electrical systems. This article was literally put out yesterday and I will link it as well as the other sources I'm using today in the description box for you to check out yourselves. But what this article is saying is that we are basically on borrowed time before a solar event of epic proportions is going to take place that we have not seen since the mid 1800s. Now it is not exactly known when this will take place but the fact that we're entering solar maximum for the next 12 to 15 years is putting us again at the most vulnerable time we can be and the simple fact that we're overdue for one of these events does not help the situation in fact in this article they compare this upcoming event with something that happened again in the 1800s specifically 1859 which is famously called the Carrington event now just bear with me as I explain what this was because it's very important to understand this to understand what an event of this size could do to today's world so here we go back in 1859 long before the internet a massive geoelectrical storm knocked out the telegraph system 
system in the world. Reports were given of telegraph operators being shocked and the equipment was being operated without batteries being connected. This was caused by the massive surge of electrical power caused by the solar storm. These storms occur when a bubble of superheated gas from the sun hits the earth. These storms cause massive damage to our solar system. Plus this occurrence causes a massive surge in electrical activity and damage. Now you can read countless articles about this Carrington event that was during solar cycle 10. We are now in solar cycle 25. Just to give you a reference of how long ago it was, September 1st, 1859, I believe was the actual date. But the main point here and what we all really need to understand is that the basic communication and electrical use we had back in 1859 is nothing compared to how much we rely on electricity today. Especially in 2022, imagine a solar flare wiping out our power grid to the point where we were basically knocked back into the Stone Age. No tablets, no phones, no internet, no working power. Even things like GPS would be out the window because our satellites would be clearly affected by this even before the Earth's magnetic field would. So it could be even as dramatic as airplanes falling out of the sky. Any sort of location equipment would be gone. The effects on Earth that this would have today are almost beyond comprehension. According to a lot of the things I've read, we're almost in a position where we can't do a thing about it. And once again, I can't stress this enough. Let us not forget the string of X-Class and high-grade M-Class flares that we've had over the last week. We made multiple videos about this situation, and to see these articles coming out with information relating to these exact situations, it's really something I could not pass up but to bring to your attention. Now, one more thing I want to talk about before I let you guys know, I know this is a lot of information to take in at once, but we made a video talking about the seismic activity taking place specifically in the northeast of the United States and parts of Canada. Just a few days ago, within an eight-hour period, we had nine different events take place. Now, it's been two days since that happened, and now I want to show you a completely new set of seismic events that took place over the last eight hours. I put them side to side for you, the right side being the most recent set, all of those taking place in the last eight hours. The left side was two days ago, and you could see that some of these events took place in the exact same spots. But what I want you to focus on is the area in the northeast that's basically being circled by these earthquakes or sonic booms, whatever they may be. This is turning into a very noticeable pattern while we are entering solar maximum, and it's certainly something to think about moving forward. All right, my friends, that's going to about wrap it up for this video. I know this was a lot of information to take in. I highly recommend you go and study some of these events that have taken place. We have had other very strong solar storms in the past. I believe there was a big one in 2004, another in 2012. So there's a lot of information out there that is supporting the idea that we are very much due for a big solar storm. And our dependence on the power grid is the biggest risk factor for that. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Question or concerns, please leave down below and I will do my best to answer them. Shout out to Canada and I hope to see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all and you will get all notifications from this channel. And trust me, you won't be disappointed.